Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jake from TNJ, and welcome back to the Lions franchise as we just came off of the biggest win in franchise history in Super Bowl 58, 42 to 28 over the New England Patriots and Tua Tagovailoa. What a game that was. Our defense definitely reigned supreme in that one. And let's just recap this season. It was quite the eventful season for sure. So Cam Newton does win MVP. Jordan Love, who we were actually going after in the draft a couple of seasons ago, he finishes second. Coach of the year goes to Matt Patricia, our coach. And let's just look at the NFC awards. Cam Newton, best offensive player. Defensive, let's see if we had any guys. Rich Patton does finish sixth. I'm pretty sure we had nobody on offense. We didn't have a huge offensive year. It was a lot of defense this year as well. Offensive Rookie of the Year. I don't think we had anybody close. Marlon Yarbrough actually finishes eighth. He barely even had 300 yards in the season. But Defensive Rookie of the Year is Bryant Ryan. And that means that he will have a development trait upgrade. So we'll check that out a little bit later but that is a good sign for our defensive line because remember in the offseason we're gonna have to make a decision on trey flowers and i'm pretty sure i'm going to franchise tag him but having bryant ryan definitely makes it easier to possibly even maybe tag and trade him or let him go i don't know but just looking at the rest of the awards joe gammon our second year kicker does win uh, the best kicker, so he will probably get an upgrade as well. And I guess that's all the awards. So coming off of that win, we have a ton of upgrades. TJ Hawkinson actually is not in the real 90 overall club yet until this upgrade. So he has an upgrade. And now he's officially at 90 overall, plus two with morale. I love how tight ends do upgrade. They go up everything. He goes up to 92 overall with morale. Number four ranked tight end in the league. What a career he's had so far. He's had 800 yards in each of his uh, seasons with us so far. Frank Ragnow is the number seven ranked center. I mean, we are doing so well developing our offensive line, and he joins the 90 overall club with the overall with the morale boost. And let's see if he jumps up to. Uh, no, he's still number seven. But Ali Gray goes up to 80 overall now with this upgrade in his rookie season let's see what he gets upgraded here plus two in man plus two in press and plus one in tackle he's number 19 in the league he's got a bright future ahead of him he's 23 years old going into next season bryant ryan the rookie of the year on defense in the nfc you can see he did get the dev upgrade just look at all of the xp he earned from that he is going to go up to 78 overall, an 8 overall jump in his rookie season. That is incredible. We will upgrade his power rusher. He goes up to 78 officially. And look at that, plus 2 power moves, plus 1 tackling. Look at the power moves. At 87, man, he is going to be a monster in the future. And he's at star development now. Maybe one more upgrade, and he's at superstar, and that would be amazing. Now, in the offseason, I'm going to be looking for a new receiver to probably... I need a guy that can do everything, take the top off the defense. I just need a superstar guy. Can Marlon Yarbrough be that guy? He's 5'10", 23 years old. He's definitely not high in overall at all, and he will also probably need to upgrade quite a bit to even be considered a true number one receiver but we upgraded him there he goes up plus two in catching almost at 80 there 92 speed he's got good speed right now and the rest of these guys i'm just gonna kind of upgrade them all not do them individually they're all kind of backup guys now let's look at the season as a whole and remember we did go 12 and 4 in the regular season justin fields and he went 22 and 13 not a great great year but a good year and this is kind of what we asked of him we were running the ball quite a bit this year probably the most we've ever run it especially in the playoffs he's a number 19 ranked quarterback at 83 overall now and his accuracy is so good and it definitely helps i gotta admit it it helps because 
When we're in games where we had to just make a crucial third down throw or a second down throw, he can make them. And he's 23 years old still. And he's star development. I mean, he's got a bright future ahead of him. Anthony Ying is going to remain the backup for the remaining years on his contract. He has four more years, I believe. I believe we signed him to... Uh, a four-year contract in the offseason last time. I, I can't remember. So he's got three years left, actually. But 26 years old, he will remain the backup quarterback. I'm, I don't have any plans to get anybody else or anything like that to back him up. I'm going to keep Ying there. So carry on. Has a good bounce back year. He's finally healthy, at least for a good portion of the season. He's still 86 overall, number 25 ranked running back in the league. He had a great playoff, and obviously he was a Super Bowl MVP so he had a great year only four touchdowns though but we spread that out uh, between all of our running backs here Kennedy Brooks almost 500 yards rushing he kind of took a back seat in the playoffs and that was because carry on's healthy you got to put your best guys out there Kennedy Brooks is not a scrub though 80 overall 24 years old and there might be a question here I mean we have three capable running backs we don't need three obviously with injuries and all that but we have 380 overall uh, running backs. We can definitely get some value out of one of these guys. And I got to admit, I just want to keep carry on. I, I don't think I'm going to get rid of him. So it's either going to be Kennedy Brooks or Travis Etienne. One of those two will go. I like Kennedy Brooks. He played a big role in filling in for the injured running backs. But I just don't know. So Justin Fields had seven touchdowns as well. Tyler Wallace got a couple of jet sweeps. Nobody else scored running the ball receiving wise it got a little bit hairy this year because we didn't have a true number one Tylen Wallace led our team in yards and touchdowns and let's just see if he got a uh no he didn't I was thinking that maybe he would would have got a uh, badge upgrade if you finish I believe it's in the top five in the NFL but obviously he didn't do that so uh he remains at 81 overall still one of the best young receivers in the league he's 23 years old number 67 ranked receiver overall and he is a great route runner 96 medium and you forget that he is that great of a route runner he's in the slot most of the time and he is a great slot receiver for us Hawkinson actually did not get 800 yards so I said 800 yards uh, he actually got 688 but seven touchdowns a pretty good season for him he led our team in receptions as well Kenny Galladay, and like I said, I want to kind of look for a new number one. Galladay had that iconic catch in the Super Bowl. He's 30 years old, though, and father time waits for nobody. He is the number 36 ranked receiver, so I might keep him around, but he is not the number one, I don't think, anymore. I want to kind of look for a new number one, and I don't think that Gall Galladay is truly reliable because he can't stay healthy as well. Miko Harmon, I might be looking to trade in the offseason as well. He didn't have a great year. He was a good fill-in. He's got that 96 speed, which makes it really hard to actually think about trading a guy with 96 speed. But even then, I ran him on a bunch of fly routes and a bunch of deep routes. And he had a couple of them during the season, but not too many. Garyon had two touchdowns receiving. Marlon Yarbrough, he had that touchdown in the playoffs, but none in the regular season. 23 catches 222 yards we'll break him in uh come next season and get him some more playing time now josh oliver to me was a great backup tight end i i think he's still under contract i guess let's check his contract but i really like him as a backup and we might be trying to look for another guy maybe if he has another year so he has one more year left so i might be trying to look at a younger tight end to kind of groom and eventually take over as the backup. TJ Hawkinson is not going anywhere. So our offensive line had a pretty good season. Javier Soriano, our right tackle, gave up the most sacks, mostly because we roll out. But the other guys did a great job. D'Angelo Boone, one of the best right guards in the league. Seeing him now, he's 23 years old, number 10. I mean, you can just see Frank right now is 7. Quinn Bryant at left guard was our first draft pick. Let's see what he is. He's number seven in the league as well. I mean, we have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL, and it shows here. And, I mean, this is just amazing. I just love the way these guys work together. Now, Jelani Tavai had another beastie year. 112 tackles, had those two picks in the Super Bowl. One and a half sacks, 13 tackles for loss. 
great year by him. Rich Patton, one sack but six interceptions. I mean, this guy is a monster. When he gets his contract, when it comes to contract time, he will be the highest paid linebacker in the league. You can just see here, he is number seven ranked overall as a right outside linebacker. He is a monster. Now, I think slot cornerback is what we're going to have to replace, though. It's going to be a need. Justin Coleman is 31 years old, 75 overall. He's going to regress. He's 87 speed, and it, and it did kind of hurt a lot because there were instances where receivers that were faster than him or even better than him would kind of beat him to the spot. He did have three and a half sacks, though. But still, I think that he had a lot of opportunity to make plays, and because of his speed and all that, I think that he missed out on a lot of opportunities. Tracy Walker is returning for another year at starter. I'm not getting rid of him. I love Tracy Walker and what he does. Um, Ali Gray in his rookie season, 45 uh, solo tackles, 66 overall, seven tackles for loss. He had no interceptions and no sacks, but he made a lot of plays. I got to admit, he made a lot of plays, and I think he is just going to build off of this rookie year. As big play Slay only, did he have any interceptions? No, he didn't. He didn't have any interceptions. But that just shows how good of a year he had. Teams were staying away from him. 84 overall, he's not going anywhere. He's going to retire a Detroit Lion. But I want to talk about my favorite guy this year, Brian Ryan, who got some playing time. At about around game three or four, I started getting him some more playing time, and he took off seven and a half sacks, 78 overall, an eight overall jump. He is amazing, and he is going to be a cornerstone on this defensive line. Right next to Trey Flowers, this is a really good defensive front. Trey Flowers, Bryant Ryan, and Sean Chapman, all of these guys, he is going to be due for a franchise tag because he did not accept the contract extension. And, I mean, well-deserved. I mean, to be honest, three straight double-digit sack seasons, pretty good feat for him. Shaquille Barrett, we signed him to a one-year deal in the offseason. I don't know if we should re-sign him. He's 31 years old, but he had a good season. He's still number 25 in the league. But I'm wondering if he's going to regress because I think after we advance this stage, they will show the regression for each of these guys, so we'll have to see. Sean Chapman at defensive tackle had a good season as well. Two sacks, but 14 tackles for loss. That's exactly what you want out of your defensive tackle there. Vincent McLeod had his first year starting. Let's just take a look at him. He is still only 77 overall. Not a big overall jump for him, but he's at 82 man. 74 zone, 69 play rec. He didn't do too bad. Even with those low play recognition uh, attributes, those, uh, those ratings, he didn't do too bad on the outside this year first time being out there tim jackson filled in a little bit he uh didn't have any, any interceptions but played a little bit reed watts we definitely want to develop him remember he is superstar we unlocked him 70 overall he's got a while to develop but superstar trait will help and you can see how many xp it takes to upgrade this guy only 2600 so we're gonna have some time to develop him so other guys that are important to our depth, Bilal Nichols actually is a depth guy on the defensive line. 27 years old. I think he might be actually due for a contract extension. I guess we'll have to see, but he has good block shedding, good stats all around, and he is actually one of the best defensive linemen as far as ratings go in this game. It looks like he does have one year left on his deal. So I think that's for next season. It might be for this season. I'm not sure. I guess we'll have to see on the next stage. And then just looking at the rest of our guys here, just some depth guys. And honestly, our team was so stacked that a lot of these guys didn't even get in. They just got in on special teams. Now, before going into the offseason, I do kind of want to show you guys the draft class. And remember, I am using SW Saps. Uh, draft class so you want to go check those out on operation sports let's just take a look at the projected number one overall pick tyson garrison a pass rushing defensive end man he is good he looks like a once in a generation type talent wow i mean look at this a plus a and a minus <laughs> that is just ridiculous but let's just look at the guys that i did add to the draft board and i can show you some of these guys and Honestly, this is a very, very deep draft. 
Speaking of deep draft and talking about uh, defensive ends, I just want to take a look at a second round projected guy, Kendall Rollins. And look at him. He's not too far off. He's 21 years old from Alabama. A minus block shed, A minus tackle, A minus power moves. If we can get him another defensive lineman to eventually take over for Trey Flowers, I think that will be ideal and kind of just building on this defense some more. But obviously the big question is what I said earlier and who's going to be that number one receiver that we're going to have in this draft. But here's the thing. The draft isn't that deep at receiver. You can see the first round projected guys. There's only one guy really worth going after, and that's Marquise Butler. And it looks like he's probably going to be gone early on in the draft. He's a projected early round pick. So he is 21 as well. I mean, teams are going to jump all over that. But there are some first round talents down here at number six rated receiver, but he's 23 years old, Brian Horn. He's six foot, not really, he doesn't really have the size. We'll see how he does at the combine. But if we go down the list here in the sixth and seventh round, there are a couple of guys that are some highly rated guys as far as projections go with the talent. And we're gonna start with Chase Christensen here, 23 years old. He's got the height, 6'5", 206, 23 years old, a late second round talent. But then we focus on Keon Knight. He's 23 years old. He is a mid first round talent. So there could be a possibility that we might have to reach for some of these guys because we want to make sure that they don't go anywhere else. But I guess we'll have to see how the draft is going. So as we go to the other positions, I didn't really scout offensive linemen. We don't really need it. But I made sure I scouted right tackles. There is a pretty good tackle here in Logan Carter. But he's 21 years old. I don't really see myself going after him unless he just absolutely falls. But I still don't see myself getting another offensive lineman when we have other needs as well. So we go to left end here and look at Daquan Johnson. But he's 23 years old, just a little bit early older. But he's 6'4", and he's got some pretty good uh top skills there especially with the block shedding being a minus that is definitely something we want to look after caleb campbell is another first round defensive end he is an early first round talent and a first round projection so if one of these defensive ends fall i mean there is no doubt that i'm going to go after him but kendall rollins looks like my favorite just because he's 21 he is 6'6", 300 pounds. I mean, that is just a lot of torque behind a 300-pound guy. We'd be putting him on the defensive line. It'd be fun. We did also scout some defensive tackles. We might want to add another one to the mix, another 21-year-old here in Dijon Robinson, and then Jordan Nowitzki. He's pretty good, but 23 years old, a little older. I like going after the 21-year-olds early on in the draft. That's kind of my thing. So then I kind of want to get a pass rusher as well. So we did scout some outside linebackers, but it doesn't seem like the class is really that deep. So I am going to be kind of probably uh, looking at defensive line early on. And the receiving uh, core isn't really that deep, except later in the draft it is. But then we move over to cornerback, and I see Jacob Thomas here. But he is an early first-round projection. He's only 20 years old. And just looking at his scouting report, he is a once-in-a-generation type cornerback. A minus man, B plus zone. I mean, you don't find that at 20 years old. That is amazing. So if he does fall or if we do have the opportunity to maybe even trade up, it could be there. It could be there. We have some trade chips. You know, we have uh, one of the running backs, obviously, and then Trey Flowers. You never know. We can give him up for our first rounder. But I'm not so sure I want to do that just yet. So just looking at the coaching firings around the league, Mike Tomlin actually was the coach of the Seahawks, and they just won the Super Bowl two years ago. I'm pretty surprised to see them let go of him so soon, and I guess they have a shorter lease than, leash than real life. And just looking at the other firings, Jason Garrett was actually with the Bengals. He gets fired as well. So that will do it for the recap here in Season 5, and we'll see what lies ahead for this team. I don't really know. What our plans going to be in the offseason besides just loading up on talent? I do want to get another top tier receiver. I don't know who it's going to be, but if somebody's on the trade block and they look 
pretty good, and it's going to be a reasonable deal. I do definitely want to get a receiver, and one that's not old. I want to get a younger guy as well, or maybe even get to go through the draft. And you guys saw that there wasn't a lot of talent in the early rounds, so we'll have to look in the later rounds. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I've been working hard for a minute. The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it. The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition. But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention. It don't matter though. Yeah. And it don't even matter though. Nope. Hey, it don't even matter.